A public utility company, usually just utility, is an organization that maintains the infrastructure for a public service, often also providing a service using that infrastructure. Public utilities are subject to forms of public control and a regulation ranging from local community-based groups to statewide government monopolies. The term utilities can also refer to the set of services provided by these organizations consumed by the public. Coal, electricity, natural gas, water, sewage, telephone, and transportation have all been considered utilities. Broadband internet services, both fixed line and mobile, are increasingly being included within the definition. In our modern lives, we use public utilities all the time, without even noticing. The power that dependably keeps us connected, the running water that we can clean ourselves with, and the sewer systems that keep our cities clean. We can scarcely imagine what life would be like without them. But it certainly wasn't always like this. Today I want to talk about utilities, what they are, how they came to be created, and how they might change in the future. When most people think of utilities in the modern day, two things immediately come to mind. Water and power. These are the things that almost everyone utilizes on a daily basis. And in some cases, they're necessities for survival. It's a bit of a problem if you lose heating in the middle of winter. Most utilities are known as something called a natural monopoly. Because it's so expensive to get started on a project like an 800,000 ton bridge or a generator that can power an, an entire city, the cost of building such a massive entity often forms a natural barrier for competition. Hence the name. Natural monopolies were recognized as potential sources of market failure as early as the 19th century. John Stuart Mill advocated government regulation to make them serve the public good. Our modern utilities usually come in the form of water and power, and perhaps natural gas or propane if you live in a place with cold winters. Looking into the subject of utilities though, I found some pretty interesting historical examples as well. The concept of a common resource used by everyone has been around since basically the Stone Age. The first public utility in the United States was a grist mill in Dedham, Massachusetts in 1640. Using the current of the Mother Brook, the mill was used by local farmers for grinding corn. Grinding by hand is very labor-intensive, so the town offered incentives to build a mill to serve the local population. Going further back in time, mills were effectively one of the first utilities, even going into the Middle Ages and beyond. Local farmers would often work together to build a mill so they could use it to grind their grain and make flour, much easier than doing it by hand. Some of the first government regulation of these valuable machines could arguably be the Roman Empire, creating massive water mills to feed their people, such as the Barbagall water mill complex with 16 water wheels, which has been estimated to be able to produce four and a half tons of flour per day. Not bad for Bronze Age engineering. As times changed and technology advanced, the resources that would become most important to the public would begin to shift. The Industrial Revolution, beginning in the 17th century, would see a massive increase in the demand for coal. Coal was vital for all industrial machinery. At this point in history, the world was seeing a massive shift because of the invention of the steam engine. The steam engine and the eventual development of the locomotive made it possible to transport massive amounts of goods over land with trains and produce massive amounts of goods in factories thanks to the power of steam. The steam engine uses a piston and the technology of using the energy of hydrocarbons to move machines would become a central part of the new industrialized world. The steam train was only the first use of an engine for mobility. The invention of the combustion engine, which had enough power to move a carriage without a horse, was another pivotal invention of human history. And as with any change, this one wouldn't go unopposed either. Maybe just salty horse farmers or something. I don't know. The first combustion engines ran on coal gas or even liquefied coal, but it was only natural that people would want a higher yield fuel. Performance can always be improved, and rather than limit themselves to only using coal, some intrepid entrepreneurs wanted to make use of this black liquid that they were finding as well. The technique of burning hydrocarbons would evolve as new methods and compounds were discovered. Coal shifted to oil, and steam engines shifted to combustion engines. The regulation of coal and oil has always been a subject of fierce debate, and the formation of monopolies is a problem that has forced the government to intervene in the past to make sure that the market is functioning properly, essentially to prevent massive companies from cornering the market 
in keeping out competition with a variety of dirty tricks. The result is the products and services do not actually improve because there's not enough competition. A monopoly can charge basically whatever it wants and people have no choice but to pay the price or go without coal for their machines. A bit of a problem if you're a farmer that uses a steam tractor. There's also a bit of an overlap with coal and electricity. The first generators were all steam engines, all coal powered. As a result, a conversation about utilities has a bit of an indirect connection with coal, even to this very day. As technology has evolved, we've seen many different interactions between government, industry, and a variety of different laws surrounding the world of mass production and how massive technical projects can impact a society. Roads, sewers, and power lines are ubiquitous parts of the modern landscape and vital for all our modern methods of transportation, sanitation, and illumination. Another aspect of modern life that has seen quite the radical shift is communication. The internet, telecommunications, and the advanced technologies that drive these systems have all become interwoven with everyday life, and the trend is not going to slow down anytime soon, at least in my opinion. The internet has grown over the decades to become a foundation of modern life, and in light of recent events, the importance of having an internet connection has become more apparent than ever. Education and employment have moved online, where it is practical to do so. The internet is perhaps becoming such a necessity for everyday life that it may need to be classified as a utility. In the early days, an internet connection was more of a luxury, but now it's almost vital for working basically any kind of job. Keeping contact by email is almost an everyday task for most most people. Internet and telecommunications haven't really been without their controversies, especially in the areas of customer service and the quality of that service. Sometimes telecommunications companies can gain a reputation for some questionable behavior in their local markets. Comcast has an entire Wikipedia article written about their controversy and the idea of net neutrality, the idea that all traffic on the internet is to be treated equally, has been basically scrapped by the FCC in the US. The issue had quite a bit of controversy surrounding it, but it appears that it's basically gone from American websites at least, meaning that large companies can pay for fast lanes for their websites. Now I'm not really sure what utility regulation for something like the internet would actually look like in practice, but I do think that internet access should be available to the general public. As we move into the 21st century, I think it is becoming more and more of a necessity. And remember, we've had monopolies form in the past as well, whether natural or unnatural. And there have been times that the government has had to intervene in the interest of the consumer. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. This has been your Everyday Engineer, signing off.